in terms of conditioning, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, for real after factory, that we said, for our transplant, there's been a lot of variability in the different measurements which we used. So whenever we look at allotransplant outcomes, we, you know, we quote a number uh, in terms of efficacy and non relapse mortality, we kind of assume that it's all using the same thing. But no, there are differences. So we have myelobated regimens and reduced intensity on non myelobated uh, yeah, conditions. So, you know, recently we uh, did a study uh, from CIDMTR. Uh, and, uh, you know, that looked at the differences in reduced intensity conditions. So even all reduced intensity condition regimens cannot be the same. So we looked at different uh, reduced intensity condition regimens, such as Fusulfan uh, plus Fludarabine, and then also Fludarabine plus Melphalan, specifically with the Melphalan dose of 140 mg per meter squared, Fludarabine cyclophosphamide, and then Fludarabine cyclophosphamide plus total body irradiation, and what we wanted to see if these the, the, the conditioning regimen had any impact on overall survival. So, um, you know, uh, and then whether these conditioning regimens had also impact on non relapse mortality or the incidence of relapse and progression and so forth, or back versus worse disease. So, uh, you know, this is a large study, it is an observational uh, cohort study. Um, with, uh, with transplant staff and multiple, multiple centers. And uh, it was a study with um, over 1,800 patients. And what we, what we found is that the most common regimen which was used was actually fludarabine uh, plus melphalan, 140 mg to use per melphalan dose. Uh, the others were, uh, you know, uh, sulfan plus fludarabine and, uh, uh, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, the flu side based combination. So uh, at the end, just to put, I'll put it all together, uh, you know, we, we found that the mortality actually was higher. So non-relapse mortality was the highest with flu male 140. It was much higher compared to the other, other groups. And this actually translated to, an, uh, to a detriment in overall survival. So flu male 140 was inferior in overall survival compared to uh, the sulfan or the other side-based regimens. So this is actually a very important finding. The most commonly used regimen is blue mel. That is one which causes higher toxicity and inferior survival compared to others. Uh, they all come under reduced intensity, but if you, if, you, if you look at it, the intensity of blue mel appears to be more than the intensity of QQ, so or blue side. So it more may not be always better. So a more intense regimen could be more toxic, which may lead to more mortality. And even though it may have a slightly lower risk of relapse, it does not compensate for the increased mortality from side effects. And so ultimately, it may not be the best regimen to use. So I think this is an important study, which kind of tells us uh, you know, how to pick regimens for aloe transplant. Uh, there is no randomized comparison, just to be clear. This is not a randomized trial. There is no large randomized study comparing the different regimens. Uh, but, you know, this study kind of informed us uh, a lot about selection of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the conditioning regimen prior to allotransplant and how it can impact uh, the survival outcome.